term, that's yeah, exactly it's basically, what you're doing. Or like, you know, when someone's really drunk and they're kind of like slumped over. I'm sorry, I'm getting away from the mic. I'm sorry. You are doing a good I'm trying to do it. But uh, it's you're like kind of slumped over and you're like, uh, you know, if you have a gun and he's like really, really drunk and like super drugged up and, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe sleepy. I don't know. <laughs> well, 30, uh, 30, cause the 30 caliber round is also a pretty high velocity lightweight round, so it's easily deflected. So it's not like the bullet necessarily had to punch straight on through and then out the other side and into the ceiling. Mm-hmm. It could have actually like been deflected inside his skull. Oh, kind of like and a magic so, bullet. Yeah, and it's uh, especially yeah with those little lightweight bullets. I mean, they are they are very easily knocked off course. Mm-hmm. So it could That's have actually bounced a couple of times and gone straight off the top of his head. Interesting. I had yeah. not heard that actually. Yeah. The one thing I will say is um, that is kind of weird is as mentioned, uh, Reeves was naked and the shell casing was found behind him, but there was no burn mark on his back mm-hmm. as you might expect. From a hot shell uh, being I'm not ejected. so sure. I mean, having been burned by hot brass myself, I can tell you it's it's not that hot that it's gonna like be, be like a branding iron or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, I gotta. Branding agree. iron is. Fu- I mean, I think. I don't know. I would expect you can pick some up, sort of mark. You can pick up an expelled oh, shell casing sorry, immediately, man. and it is hot, and it is hurt, mm-hmm. but you can wait till it cools off, and you will not always be blistered. So that's. Well, I'm, blistering I've never I'm not. I'm not. From it. Yeah. I'm not suggesting blistered, but like red. But he was dead. Mm. Yeah. Not like his body was going to be able to react. Mm. Yeah, good yeah, point. But yeah, I mean, I've had like you know, I've had him like land, like hot brass, like land right between my collar and my neck. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's unpleasant, but it's never left any mark. Okay, fair enough. You know? he, he made a lot of not nice noises. Yeah. All right. Retrieving. How about this one? Hot shots. Apparently, you All can right. explain Sorry, everything Devin. that's weird. Um, they also found two bullets in the floor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are easily explained. That was probably target practice. <laughs> Maybe they're easily explained. They were from the same Luger. As mentioned, everyone was real drunk. They did agree they only heard the one gunshot. Again, this assumes they told the truth. But I will say that there's no evidence to suggest that those happened that night yeah could have happened could have happened anytime i mean granted you kind of hope there aren't just random discharges happening in the house of a gun but oh, like oh no yeah, lenore, lenore said that she fired those two rounds previous mm. to that night. i heard that somewhere too that you know she i mean this one was known as we're going to talk about she was a bit of a hothead and she uh-huh. had uh, she had fired it that way I do want to talk about one quick thing on the murder, or this this whole theory that we're in. Okay. Because there are, people have said that there is no way that George Reeves could have fired that gun in that position and had the shell go behind him because... In the reading, it always yeah. says, because those shell casings generally eject to the right. And as Joe yeah. will probably know, this particular Luger ejects a shell out of the top mm-hmm. instead of the left or the right, like you see a lot of uh, handguns these days. Mm-hmm. And so it can kind of go that way. But I watched videos of guys shooting that gun, and it really depended on the angle that the gun was held as to whether the shell ejected forward, backwards, left, or right. That's why I so continue to maintain he was just like cattywampus. <laughs> it could have been, yeah, he was, it probably was holding it like sideways. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so like the back, so it would have expelled backwards. But also, but we talked about this during Kurt Cobain's suicide. I mean, uh, shell, uh, shells are usually flung from the gun with, you know, at a high rate of speed. Mm-hmm. A lot of energy there. and. Could easily bounce off a wall or two and then and then land yeah. behind you. It's not well. Not I didn't. That, it uh, landed under his body, so I don't know that it would have had time to bounce a couple times and then oh, yeah, land I mean, under his body. No, it would have been able to bounce once. That it, thing is whizzing fast. I mean, depending on how fast his body fell over. Yeah, it was. I mean, they, they Bodies really, fall pretty fast. Uh, yeah, spent showcasing move faster. Uh, they, they really, yeah, they do. Yeah, they have, they have peace cheetahs. Mostly, yeah. I just don't really have a problem with it being under. No. Actually, I have more of a problem with it being under him if he was murdered then well i just bring it up because in the yeah no that's worth it couldn't in the thing of you know it it had to be murder people will say well he couldn't have shot himself and had the shell casing end up underneath his own body and well actually i do believe it's entirely possible oh yeah he totally could have Mm -hmm. all right so um if he did get murdered let's talk about who might have done it we're gonna well, first of all, I mean, what do we think? Murder or suicide? I'm kind of like a murder myself. I like murder, too, actually. Yeah. Steve's like, no, no, no. I'm um, not sure. So, 
The first theory is that Lenore Lemon killed him, either in a drunken rage or like something else, but probably in like some sort of drunken something because yeah. she was pretty drunk. Uh, she was a hothead too, yeah. and uh, maybe they so all of her all of her buddies downstairs kind of covered for her. Well, yeah. So we'll let's let's, yeah, just let's go get through into this. this. Yeah, because there's a bunch here. There is. So you will remember from getting through the events leading up to that the couple, you know, Lenore and Reeves. Oh. Um, Lemon and Reeves had had a fight earlier that night, maybe at dinner, or maybe I guess at the wrestling match they may or may not have gone to. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, what a great date! Yeah, yeah. Uh, and well, and, and Condon was there too, so <laughs> it's, it's like a whole big group. Apparently, a little alone time. Yeah, apparently the fight might have been about the wedding. Reporting does vary, but like we mentioned, there was some speculation that Reeves didn't even know they were engaged, but there's also some speculation that what happened that night is that Reeves just said, like, no, I'm not marrying you. That's and, it. It's off. Yeah, that's it. Give it's me off. the ring back. Or, like, move out, because she had a pretty sweet thing going for her, actually. It's kind of like last week's story. Yeah, a little bit. Or maybe Lemon was mad because they had fought at midnight. Lemon might have also been annoyed because Reeves may or may not have been speaking with his ex-girlfriend again. It actually reports totally Barry. Either Lemon was crazy or he actually maybe was talking to her again. Ah, she was crazy. Lemon was actually a terror, as mentioned. Um, yeah. She was the first woman ever to be thrown out of New York, the New York Stork Club for fist fighting. That's a girl you could get behind the in a fight. The Stork Club is... Uh, pretty prestigious club in New York. They're still around, right? They are, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I think they are. It Basically, it was a status symbol. You know, anybody who's anybody has a membership to the club. It has club. enough money. Yeah, well, anybody who's anybody, right? Lemon was also supposedly a bit of a gold digger. She was married to a man... Uh, She's been married with two or three times? She's been married, I think, two times. Oh, so this is going to be third. Yeah, the more recent... The, the more recent one, she married the guy. It was an eight-day one, right? They were, they were actually, yeah. The, she only stuck around for like eight days, but she didn't actually divorce, man, divorce him. That's a happy couple. Uh, <laughs> she didn't divorce him until something like ten years later, five years later, five years later. Yep. Uh, when he tried to, he, and he found out when he tried to marry someone else, and then was hit with a polygamy suit or something like that. Is this what you're planning to do? Yeah, it's my plan. All along. <laughs> poor, poor fiance. There are a number of reasons why it's possible that Lennon actually did kill Reed, as well as some evidence to maybe suggest that the guests were lying. Bliss, for his part, did recant his story years later. Kind of, maybe. His friend, he had told her, so this is like a third-hand account or something like that. There's a lot of third-hand mm-hmm. accounting here. Yeah, that's true. That what actually happened on that night was that Reeves had yelled at the people who, it was at about like 1.20 a.m., had come down, was angry, and Lemon got angry, and then they both went up to the master bedroom to kind of have it out. The guests that heard... a the bruising. Mm-hmm. The guests heard a gunshot, and then Lemon came running back downstairs and said, tell them I was down here, tell them I was down here. And then they waited 46 minutes to call the cops. Uh-huh. I, I, what I don't get is why anybody would cover for her. Well, yeah, it, it's, she she wasn't filthy rich. No, she didn't have no, that powerful active. friends. Like, what did she have to 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 coerce them? Um, I don't know. Well, yeah. so I one thing I guess we could say is that Van Ronkel and Condon were having an affair. So she knew about that. Okay, so she, she could hold that them. over them. And then who Lord knows why that why Bliss was there even. So he supposedly was a engineer. he probably was just interested in the HVAC system. I mean he could have He was trying to sell him what yeah. Yeah. You know, your windows weren't open. This would never have happened. Ah. Yeah, so it's possible that she had dirt on all of them or something like that. It's also possible I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you know, people have these things called friends. Mm-hmm. And friends sometimes do kind of like weird moral things to like cover for each other. I'm sorry if I am drinking with friends and what and two of them go upstairs and only one of them comes back down after a gunshot. I'm probably not gonna cover for them. That's because you're a good person. 
you don't live in Hollywood. Listen, I've been accused worse. <laughs> so that's true. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it, you typically expect in conspiracies like that that people sooner or later somebody's going to spill the beans. Although, on, on the other other hand, I guess some people have sort of spilled the beans. Maybe. I mean, Bliss, for example, yeah. sort of did, and a few other people did, kind of yeah. too. Yeah. As I've also, uh, I've also read, and I can't, I don't know, like why. There's so many versions of this. There's so many versions of this, but I've read cops say that. Lemon, I don't, and I don't know how they got this information. That Lemon had somebody told somebody else after the fact. Yeah, that's and where then they told the from. cops. I think that it was. I, I read that it was somebody, maybe Condon, Richard Condon, Condon. who made this up. But, but you saw it in the papers reports at, of the time, contemporary, contemporaneously, mm-hmm. uh-huh. in the Los Angeles True. Times, that these words did appear in there. But she said apparently years later that no, she didn't actually say that. Yeah. Well, she would have good reason to not say that. Although that? this doesn't really fit into the... Well, she would have good reason to not say these words to yeah. begin with, really. So, so the way that she tells the story, that Condon tells the story, is that Reeves had come down, yelled, and then went back upstairs. And Lemon said to the group, he's probably going upstairs to shoot himself. And then a noise was heard upstairs, and she said, he's opening a drawer to get the gun. And then the shot was heard, and she said, see there, I told you so. Which, Which is not a normal uh, reaction. It's no. not, and it also... It kind of makes you wonder, like, how she knew he was going to go shoot himself. I actually was thinking about that, and I I would be really, really interested. I wish the cops had talked to other people who had come over and drank with them, because I could see this being a drunken gag that they pulled on people. They're in a bad, you know, hey, okay, I'm going to go upstairs, and I'm going to shoot myself, and then just fires the gun into the floor Which where he knows it won't floor. go anywhere. Yeah. And so let's say there was those two rounds already in the floor. Mm. Maybe they had done this two times before and so she's gotten really good at the timing except this time he actually does the deed. I don't know. I That's a dumb game. Really, I, get I don't it. understand, but maybe. Yeah, you know what? One of the funniest, funniest ones I saw was that he didn't mean to kill himself, but he was playing Russian roulette. <laughs> I, was like, I did see. I chose to omit that, but play, yeah. Playing Russian roulette with an automatic is like, you know. The worst idea. <laughs> it qualifies you for the instant Darwin Award. Agreed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that theory. I don't either. Yeah. yeah. As to the reason why, we mentioned briefly that there may have been an ex-girlfriend involved. And that ex-girlfriend may or may not have actually been somebody that Reeves was having an affair with at the time. Okay. Well, the affair officially was over in 1958, but we'll ignore that for a minute. Who was said lady? The said lady was this woman by the name of Tony Mannix, who was wife of MGM VP Eddie Mannix, who was a fixer. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, that's what MGM stands for? Yeah. Eddie was what's known as a fixer mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah, he uh, took care of you know bimbo eruptions, scandals, that kind of thing. He's what we would call like a PR manager now. Wait, wait, Joe, is that a real term? What's that? Bimbo eruptions? Yeah, that was actually a term from the Clinton administration. Oh, okay. Because okay. remember, he was routinely accused. Got it, got it. Her, I just yeah. was asking. You bring, you, <laughs> yeah. you bring up some of the weirdest terminology, so I have well, to make sure you're not making it up on the spot. Oh, Continue no. on. Sorry, Devin. It's also rumored that uh, Eddie had ties to the mafia, which wouldn't have been so unheard of in those days. But I'm going to get you, see? I'm going to get you, see? See, now, see? Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think a lot of those guys actually got financing from the mob. Mm-hmm. I would postulate that it's a, a little possible that Eddie was annoyed with the affair. Shh, shh, shh. Just, let me get this theory. Nobody can hear me shaking yeah. my head, Devin. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> that Eddie maybe was annoyed and so he killed Reeves, but we actually know that's not true. Well, we do. We're pretty sure. I'm pretty oh, sure. He, well, pretty we, we're pretty sure he didn't do it personally. He wasn't great. He wasn't that great of health. Well, actually, Eddie knew about the affair. Oh yeah. And he had a, his own younger mistress. Oh, apparently, they uh, they actually hung out together. I mean, his mm-hmm. wife. They and were actually like out with Eddie. So they double dated. Yeah. 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 yeah, they did. Yeah. It, <laughs> Which is so creepy. Tony and Eddie were both a fair amount older than Reeves. Yeah. I think like twenty years. Ten. Tony. Uh, was ten. Ten. I understand. Ten years. Ten. Well, no, he was a lot. Eddie was a lot older than Tony. Tony yeah. was like eight years older than Reeves. Right. So. I'm, yeah. talking, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm talking about the gap between Reeves and, and Tony. Yeah. 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 There was that gap. And then, yeah. yeah. Anyway. So I think if, if a Mannix did kill or have Reeves killed, it would have been Tony. And she actually apparently did confess to the crime. Yeah. Although it's a, she said. Dubious. Blah, blah, blah. 
the person who says that she confessed it had a dubious relation as mentioned at best tony also suffered from alzheimer's disease and senile dementia so (laughs) not that everything that she said was wrong but there's a lot of plausible deniability here she was apparently a pretty feisty woman in and of herself and it is possible because reeves did seem to suspect that tony was behind a lot of weird stuff that was happening to him right before yeah he sort of thought she was stalking him yeah so his dog disappeared a couple months before he died and oh uh that car accident that i mentioned in passing earlier it turns out that the reason that he crashed his car was because somebody had totally drained the brake fluid out of his car and he openly said that he suspected that it was Tony that had done that. Tony who had had somebody do it. Well, she yeah, probably, probably wasn't crawling under the car. She didn't do it herself, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. but that she was behind it. And apparently Tony was actually when I've heard extremely upset when he broke it off with her. Huh. Yeah, I think she was. Uh, yeah, she she apparently had uh, quite the uh, the ability for colorful language. Yeah, and so she so... was my kind of girl. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, minus the crazy bit. Well, this is uh, the late fifties. I mean, uh, you know, she said darn and heck quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. heck them. Yeah. She's heck them right to darn. Yeah, darn them right to heck. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Darn some socks. The, the other kind of thing that people talk about here, and this is the last thing we're going to cover real quick, is that. TV's Lois Lane was actually a, a mutual friend of Reeves and Tony. Uh, you know, her name, her name's Phyllis Coates. She said that Tony actually called her hysterically at like 3 o'clock in the morning on June 16th. So way earlier than anybody would have really known that Reeves was dead. But Tony apparently called Phyllis hysterical and said that Reeves had been murdered and was very upset about it. So if it was a m- murder and Tony did it, that would, like, I don't know if that would explain that, but it's There's a weird. million ways that she could have found, gotten that information before it hit the world. Right, but I think the the catch there is her just immediately saying he was murdered because they, the police, everybody at the scene just automatically said it was suicide. But a lot of other people just never bought the whole suicide thing from the get-go. Yeah, that's true. And, I, and actually, you know, by the way, too, and it's like uh, somebody in the house or, you know, could have called somebody or actually could have called Tony directly and say, oh, my God, George has been shot. He's dead. That, yeah, that's and, exactly where it was going. And she that's would true. immediately think murder, murder rather than suicide because apparently a lot of his friends said there's no way he committed suicide. Right. But, yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's the end of our theories section. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I I find it I find it hard to believe that he committed suicide just because it seems a bit out of character for everything that was going on. It seems a little late in the game to suddenly decide to end it all. Sure. But then there's weird stuff like if he was murdered and it was Lenore. There's the whole thing. She came back to the house what two three days after it and mm-hmm. rifled through the place and stole several thousand dollars in cashier's checks. And then beat feet to uh, to yeah. New York, never to come back. She and didn't even actually go to Reeves, George Reeves' funeral. No, she didn't. And she yeah. actually she turned into kind of a tragedy case of, of herself because she, she turned, turned into in. a, a complete total alcoholic. Oh yeah, and turned into. She, That's a good point. <laughs> she okay. probably was already she on that path. She became a full blown alcoholic yeah. and died in her room, uh, unbeknownst to anybody. And her body wasn't found for three days or something like that? I heard four. Yeah. Something like that. So it's just like, oh, wow. That's, I mean, she just, she'd fallen so far down the well. Yeah. Mm. It's tough. I mean, I don't, it's, it's just hard. I don't really like any of the theories. I don't believe any of the theories really, but I don't also necessarily think he killed himself. He may, I'm willing to go the totally accidentally was like leaning on his gun and was like, oh, oops killed himself but that's about as close as i'll i'll go to the suicide theory but i don't know it's just i think there's just a lot of weird wrapped up in this case yeah i'm unsatisfied i understand why people are still wondering um of course you know i mean it could have been an accident too i mean maybe they were arguing she had the gun and uh she had no didn't intend to kill him but you know lugers from what i hear have touchy triggers um, I don't own one myself, but uh, it might be that she was just brandishing the gun and all of a sudden it goes off and kabang. It's like, whoopsie. 
That just... well, that would be that theory of you know. Then she came running downstairs and was like, Ugh. yeah, and like, oh, uh, I was down here. Yeah, we had a little accident. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And so, and and that, and that really wouldn't be that suspicious of a thing, you know, because if you accidentally killed somebody, you're still kind of liable for for that your behavior. Yeah. yeah. Even though they're not going to pin murder on you. Yeah. They, you know, they, but they'll still get you for manslaughter. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. That's true. Steve, Joe, what do you guys think? I mean. I don't know. I, I'm still. I'm torn. Yeah, me too. Yeah, the no. I mean, the no gunshot residue on the scalp is that's uh, pretty telling. I mean, it's hard to imagine anybody shooting themselves in the head and not leaving, not not getting it close enough to get some gunpowder residue. I, I and, still, I still question if they actually tested for it. Well, yeah, that's the whole question. Is I don't know if they did. I had heard one place that they didn't actually test for it, uh, which is amazing. I mean, do think though that they would at least have noticed powder burns. I mean. Gunpowder residue you're going to get from a distance, you know, any, any, pretty much any distance under like five feet, you know, you're going to get that. But anybody that shoots himself in the head, you're, you're going to probably touch the gun to your head. Yeah. Uh, you probably, you know, because otherwise you're not really sure unless you're standing, you don't really know if you're going to kill yourself and blow your brains out or if you're just going to blow your face off and not kill yourself. Yeah. It would be really depressing. Really awful, yeah. Yeah, it, it, and it does happen. And that's the hard time. part is that there's, not that I want to see gory images, but there are no photos of his body pre and, you know, from the, like the autopsy or anything mm, on the crime no. scene. The police the, didn't take photos. They, of they, I know, the best thing I saw was, you know, I, I think it was drawing. a coroner, a cor- coroner's, yeah. coroner's sketch, which is not worth a whole hell of a lot. Yeah. No. The, only, the only point of that is just to show where the bullet went into the one of the skull. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 So I I don't know. I don't I don't have a good answer. Sorry, guys. Oh well. Yeah. That, that is a tough one. Um, I yeah. I got to flip a coin here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for murder. Okay. Cool. So if you want to see that um, layout of Reeves's house or see some other links to some of the research that we did, you can find that as well as merch and a list of all the other episodes we've done as well as download episodes on our website. That website is thinkingsidewayspodcast.com. You can find us on social media to interact with us. We've got uh, Twitter. We've got a uh, subreddit. We've got a Facebook page, and we've got a Facebook group. Ooh, which so, are both awesome. Yeah, every well, all of it's awesome. So uh, you can find us on all of those forms of media. And if you have feedback, you'd like to suggest something like Clarissa did or just want to talk to us, you can just do tell that. tell us how wonderful we are. You can do that on the email, and that email Check address... Check the email. Check the email. Okay, Sorry. strong bad. Uh, the email address is thinkingsidewayspodcast at gmail.com. Uh, 